<laughs> Welcome to I Can Because I'm an African. Changing the narratives about who we are, restoring ourselves to our original state. Today we're with Mel. Mel, can you introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Mel Musimi. I was born in Sibuking in Davao. Uh, a lot of people thought I was born in the Free State because that's where I spent the bulk of my life. But born in the Free State. I mean, in Davao. Why in Davao? In Davao. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. So, in the year 2000, where were you? What were you most concerned about? Oh boy, I was in Marato, Mafiki, Marato High School. Um, I was thinking about life beyond high school. I had grand plans and I had a wealth of confusion in my head about what I wanted to do, what I wanted to be. And um, yeah, I was just navigating from one area of my life to the next. I know that feeling, that feeling like in your trick and you just don't know. What were one of those grand plans then? Well, look, I uh, was raised by my grandparents, uh, and my grandmother was a professor in communication, so I thought naturally I would navigate towards that direction. Uh, but life had different plans for me. <laughs> okay. It didn't quite work out the way I had uh, planned. But, uh, yeah, I was, I was a little all over the show, but I had already begun pursuing my entrepreneurial pursuits in high school. So is either venture into business and or pursue this communications route, which would be the natural pro pro progression since my grandmother was in that field. Okay, nice. So like what you said, that life at other plans. So let's fast forward that life. Yeah. And let's take that life to present day. So take us through a day in your life now, in the year 2015. 2015. Um, it hasn't been at all what I had anticipated. I mean, I've been dabbling as a young black woman in a lot of fields, wanting to hone my skills. I've been in the corporate field, started my uh, career as a receptionist, worked my way as an executive PA, events manager, PR manager, and started dabbling into business with all the experience that I acquired throughout the years. So uh, what, where it has brought me through today after having learned as much as I possibly could gather in the corporate space, uh, even with my philanthropic pursuits through uh, CSI channels that I'd become involved in by default. Um, today, I am what you term an aspirant businesswoman with uh, business interests in the immediate, medium, and long term. Um, so what I'm busy right now with is a company called Network Africa where we seek to bridge the divide between Africans, doing business with each other, getting to know about each other. You know, uh, like I said to you earlier, this continent is not only resource rich. True. We have resources in the form of human capital. We have resources in the form of very intelligent people who have amazing stories to tell that the rest of the continent is oblivious to. Uh, and we can learn a great deal from one another do something about this beauty that is termed the dark continent. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of light in this dark continent, in my opinion. And Amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. It's just sparks that are few and far between. We just need to bring them together to ignite something special. Okay. And uh, you know that's why I'm very, I very admire this initiative that you've taken to get the stories out there, because it's just amazing how we are not very keen on telling our own stories, and we have rich stories to tell that can inspire. A great movement as far as like going for permission. Absolutely. Right. It's absolutely and right. it's 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 very disappointing the image that the continent has around the world and we haven't taken our power back. And this is one of the greatest ways to take our power back and say, wait a minute, that's not quite so. There's amazing stories on the continent and they ought to be shared in whatever way we can. So what we'll do is that we'll obviously give people access to that bridging network to network Africa. And network Africa. Okay, cool. Then tell me 2018, three years from now, where do you see yourself? Where are you going to be? What are you going to be doing? Who are you going to be? <sighs> wow. Uh, I have scary ambitions. <laughs> they frighten me most Good. of the time, but uh, that would be in three years' time. I have big plans that involve education. Okay. I mean, we've, this, this has been the year of the woman, and it also has been the year of the student with the hashtag fees must fall. And it's very telling about what power the youth within the continent have. Um, so as a result, I have been planning for the past five years. So I'm hoping probably three years I'll, I'll, I'll see it through. 
uh, to have a 24-hour library that has a focus on the continent. Okay. To learn as much as we possibly can, get in, the people involved who are technologically inclined to give us access stories, research, you know, and do proper, thorough, credible market research on the continent because I don't feel that it's been done justice, not, not even by a fraction. Um, and I have, you know, other business pursuits uh, in the steel and manufacturing and exporting uh, field. Um, so yeah, big dreams, a lot to mention. <laughs> so we'll, we'll have one meeting, yeah. You're going to have the 24 hour library that's, that market research and should be a plan in steel. That's, that's the plan. Wonderful. That's the plan. Final question. If you were given a phone with one minute in attack to call your 17 year old self, knowing what you now know, what would you say to 17 year old Mel? For one minute. Wow. That's not nearly enough. <laughs> One minute. Um, I'd have a mouthful to say, but I'll just pick out a couple, maybe three at most. Is to say, run your race your own pace. Okay. Um, your story is not the same as your neighbor's. Uh, I tell myself that I'm worthy. You know, I went through a bulk of my life uh, dealing with what we term black ticks mm. and you know, giving and pleasing to my absolute detriment. And as I'm becoming of age, I realize that. I cannot give what I do not have. Correct. Um, it's, it's, correct. In the black culture, yeah. it's very it's expected of us to give and be a whole lot to others. It's more than like we are to yeah. Exactly. Yes. Um, there's ways to go about it because Africans are you know generally very giving and sharing people, but there's a way to do it without taking away from yourself. Yeah. And I tell myself thirdly that I'm enough. You know, pretty often we question and want to fit in in a certain group, especially if you're navigating through, towards life. I mean, I started out in rural Kalanj, in the free state, that's where I grew up, speaking little to no English, went to Malaki High School, and then I wanted to fit in. So most of my 20s were about trying to fit in and trying to please people and fit in. And I, I totally didn't fit because I was totally different in my thinking, and my path was not to be what was expected. So I, I tell myself, you're worthy, you're worth it, and you're enough. You're enough. That's, that's what I tell my 17 year old self. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. that. Thank you. We'll share all the information that she touched on, as well as other stuff at the bottom of this video. Thank you.